Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. This recession or depression is a lot worse than they thought. I wanted to get your take on the economy. Is it as bad as they're saying? Or do you see a light at the end of the tunnel? Yeah, no, there is, there is no light at the end of the tunnel, especially if you're believing the mainstream narrative. Uh, the IMF has never been more bearish on the economy that I've seen. It's very unusual for them to admit that it's as bad as it is. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm being, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm being extra selective as far as allocating. Um, if you're going to be an investor now, and, and that is my specialty, uh, you want to be a, a stock picker. You don't want to just buy the whole economy because it's not looking great right now. Um, what I do is I don't, and Portfolio Wealth Global, we're very, very picky about what we choose. We're choosing companies that are uh, good in terms of fundamentals. They've been around for a while. They have what Warren Buffett calls an economic moat. Uh, and that means some sort of competitive advantage that will keep them ahead of the pack, especially when the economy does get worse. Uh, and so for people who are not super familiar, the International Monetary Fund is a, sub a systematically important institution, and it's warning investors that the recession is basically going to be not just a double dip type of thing. Uh, people are wondering what shape is the economy going to be. It's not even a W anymore. It's definitely going to be an L or worse. Um, or just the opposite of parabolic, just straight down pretty much. Uh, they're concerned about the market's high valuations. You've got the stock market going in one direction, totally divorced from the actual real economy. I've never seen the IM IMF so bearish on the economy. Uh, meanwhile, the markets have been uh, pricing in a smooth recovery. So any real bad news would lead to a pretty steep sell off at this point. Um, so don't just buy index funds and expect any kind of real returns. Uh, this is a market where you don't want to buy, for instance, bankrupt companies, which are hot right now. I, I'm sure you heard about this. The bankruptcy trade. This is a real thing. <laughs> People are buying Hertz, JCPenney, Whiting Petroleum, Chesapeake, things like that. Uh, you could do much better than that. And with a lot less risk. So Portfolio Wealth Global, our team is very picky. Uh, we buy stocks that are uh, when there's an overcorrection to the downside uh, and it's when it's overstated, we can get in, we can start accumulating. Uh, we have a couple of lists uh, that are open to the public. If you go to PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash list L-I-S-T and we just made a part two uh, that's forward slash L-I-S-T number two. Uh, you can download those and you can see my personal watch list. I don't chase the prices of stocks that I like. No chasing allowed. That's something I tell people over and over. Use limit orders, not market orders, so you can get the price that you want, not the price that the market thinks is right. And you wait for the price to come to you. That's fundamental, but people don't do it. They're chasers. Uh, choose companies that you think have strong potential even in the face of COVID, even in the second, and there will be a third wave of COVID, as there have been in past pandem pandemics. When you get into those good companies, start accumulating and then be right and sit tight. Just sit on your hands and let the price come back up as the recovery finally comes back into play. You know what? Uh, what's very interesting is that normally uh, the mainstream media, when they're in line with the Fed, they never tell us that there's a recession coming. If you go back to 2008, they weren't out there saying recession's coming, depression's coming. Actually, Bernanke was out there saying that they're not forecasting recession. I find it very odd right now that the IMF, who's been off 
with every prediction they have ever ever made even when they said that you know global gdp is going to be five percent you know that's fake so now all of a sudden they're telling us that it's a recession it's a depression and now businesses are opening up yes they're not at full capacity right now but things are starting to open up we have rates at zero we have unlimited stimulus now in this country do you think they're trying to push a recession or depression by telling everyone this and with the mainstream media trying to tell everyone this I I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, there's been a war on the middle class for a long time. The IMF is part of that globalist movement, as are you know some other factions. Um, all right, there are even people saying that uh, COVID is fake. It, it's not fake. It's real. <laughs> I I work closely with people in the healthcare business, and uh, it it is a real thing. Does the IMF want to tank the economy? Uh, sure, it, w- it wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, look, we at Portfolio Wealth Global, we do a lot of research. We knew early on that COVID-19 was an economic issue, not so much a health issue. And we're in the middle of a huge economic bubble. Uh, like I said, people are betting on bankrupt companies. Millennials are betting on options. They're day trading. There are 18-year-olds. I'm sure you've seen them on YouTube selling courses. <laughs> trading courses. Uh, The 35% COVID drop and the rebound, it really wasn't even, that's not the bear market. That's not it. Uh, It's coming. And uh, the IMF, will it precipitate that? Will it help it to happen? Sure. They would love to see that. Uh, We're still in a massive bubble. It's This is the most dangerous part of it because a lot of people are getting suckered into it, unfortunately. Uh, the Fed has never been in the ba- in the business of bailing out individuals. The government's never been in the business of doing that. They're in the business of bailing out corporations. Uh, so, again, most dangerous part of the cycle. It's kind of like you might recall April 2017 with uh, cryptocurrencies. I like cryptocurrencies, but we were trying to warn people that this is what a bubble looks like. It's overcorrected to the upside. It's a melt up and I, I don't recommend it now. Um, that's what we said back then. We turned out to be right. Uh, so that's where we are with the economy. There's maybe six more months where they can keep pushing it, pushing it higher at most. This is the last stretch of the euphoric cycle. Uh, the indexes are going to be volatile. You need to decide as an investor, if you want to be an investor, uh, whether you just want to sit on the sidelines and observe this craziness, which is fine. Uh, or you can watch the mania and try to capitalize it. Uh, you know, we we have a, a report on that, PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash round two, R-O-U-N-D number two, uh, how to survive and even thrive financially during the wave two of the COVID crisis and even wave three, which is coming. Uh, you don't have to listen to the IMF. You don't have to listen to the mainstream press. You just want to look at the fundamentals and decide for yourself. That's the only way you're going to survive this. So why are people uh, purchasing bankrupt companies? Why would they do this? Yeah, these are, and not to put down Robinhood as a company necessarily, they're called Robinhood traders. Uh, It's really fascinating that there are a lot of people getting into trading and investing now who probably shouldn't uh, because they're not going about it in the right way. I invite people to get involved in investing uh, because as Warren Buffett once said a long time ago, if you don't find a way to make money while you're sleeping, then you will work till you die. (laughs) That's pretty grim, but that's the reality of it. And with the dollar deteriorating rapidly, uh, it's just going to get worse if you just hold cash year after year. Uh, So, the bankruptcy trade is precipitated by the Robin Hood traders, and they're not all in Robin Hood. Schwab, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, they all have uh, either free or very close to free, commission-free, uh, fee-free t- uh, trading right now, which has democratized investing to a certain extent. Uh, extent. But with the lockdowns in place, uh, a lot of millennials and even some of the older Gen Z generation uh, they're bored and they're viewing it almost like a game. Uh, but this is not like a Facebook uh, game, you know, where you could just play it. No, this is real money. And uh, they're pushing up stocks that really shouldn't be. Uh, it's very bizarre to see Hertz declare bankruptcy and then the next day go up 50, 80, 100 uh, percent within a few days. 
Uh, it shouldn't be like that. It's not going to go well. That's why I'm in the business and my team is in the business of finding better ways to go about it because it, it's really not going to end well. So during this whole entire time where, I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, I remember the mainstream media was out there telling us that the market was going to drop to seven to 8,000 points. That never happened. And what's very interesting, during this same exact time, we had gold. It continually inches higher and higher and higher. And we saw this back in uh, 2008, 2009, going into 2010, where gold went up to 1900. And then all of a sudden, boom, it started to fall. Um, manipulation, no manipulation. I, I think it was manipulation. But now we're starting to see the same thing. We're at, what, 17 and change, almost hitting 1800. I mean, is there going to be, I mean, are we, are we going to see the same thing when it hits 1900? All of a sudden, it's going to drop back down and we're going to see the repeat of 2008, 2009, 2010? Uh, I don't believe so. I, I see gold going to 3000 in the short term. Uh, and I'm not the only one who thinks this. Uh, I've, I've never seen so many Wall Street banks and Wall Street go globalists as well saying that gold is going to 3000. I, I think that's just the starting point. It, it's a yeah, yeah. You've got the nineteen hundred dollar resistant resistance level where it was previously before it dropped, as you alluded to. Uh, but once it gets past that, it's it's off to the races. And then you've got silver, which will go to twenty two. And that's just in the short term. Uh, all people are waiting for and all the hedge funds and the globalists are waiting for is for inflation to go to two percent. Uh, because there is that inverse correlation bet uh, between hard assets and inflation. Uh, gold will go to all-time highs and higher. Silver will blast off. The demand is there. They're all just waiting right now. Um, during, look, if you go back in history, during the times of Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, it was mostly those two that were pulling the strings uh, in, in terms of real rates, inflation. They had more control over interest rates, money supply, and policy. Uh, but now it's different with the dynamic between uh, Jerome Powell, the Fed chair, and Trump. Uh, Trump is an alpha male, <laughs> and he's not about to let Jerome Powell take the country where he wants it to go. And he's, you know, Jerome Powell could talk about no negative interest rates all day long. Uh, he also tried bringing uh, interest rates on the 10 year yield up to 3%. That was his idea. Uh, then Trump basically threatened to fire him, and he backed down, as everybody knew he would. Um, Trump wants negative interest rates. Uh, he wants a competitively priced dollar as well. And this is all massively bullish for gold and for silver. Uh, now, silver has been to the $50 level before, and it's trading still at a deep discount compared to gold. If you look at the gold to silver ratio, which people should watch. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't own gold. It means you have a compelling uh, opportunity to own both silver and gold. If you don't already, you can rebalance. Uh, and you could also use the stock market to potentially magnify your gains in precious metals. We have a report on that, uh, PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash gold playbook, gold playbook. And another one at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com forward slash ratio, R-A-T-I-O, uh, because right now with the gold to silver ratio, tr uh, it's at 100. That means it takes 100 uh, one ounce bars of silver to purchase a one ounce bar of gold. Uh, the median is around 60. Uh, so does that mean you should be shorting gold? No, it means you could just rebalance into silver and certain silver stocks that are priced to move, in my opinion. Do you think uh, the ratio between gold and silver is going to close as time goes on? Yeah, it always has. Um, even when it gets up to the mid 80s, uh, sometimes it's gotten up to 90 historically. This is the highest it's ever been. It's well, at least in the past century. You know, we're assuming you don't go back to ancient times. In modern history, it is the highest it's been. And every time it gets close to 90, it always comes back down. Um, it, it's, it's cyclical. These things are all cyclical. And is there a trade there, such as a pairs type of trade? You could. I think you're better off just owning both gold and silver. I do. Um, it, it's an ancient asset that will retain its value, and it's a great hedge against uh, the dollar, which – Again, uh, the United States wants, the White House wants the dollar to be competitive as a means of trade and to make it easier to pay down the interest on the debt. It's easier to do that if the, de if the debt is denominated in dollars. Uh, then you, know, you got all these forces that want the dollar to go down. The dollar has always gone down over time. Who knows how much longer the dollar will be the world's reserve currency. I'm not uh, considering it to be 
even for the rest of my lifetime to be the world's reserve currency. So why not have some hard assets that you can hold? So you mentioned negative uh, interest rates and you're saying that Trump, I, he said it many times before that he wants negative interest rates. Now you're saying this will push up gold and it will reduce the value of the dollar. If gold continually moves up and we get past that 1900 point, will people start looking at the Fed note? That's actually what it really is. It's a Federal Reserve note. It's an instrument of debt. Will people be looking at it saying, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here? We're at 1900, even if it goes to 2000 or like you said, 3000, is this going to cause some type of problem in the economy with the dollar? I mean, are people going to say, okay, wait a minute, I'm going to have to hedge against the dollar here. Gold is moving up. Let me move into gold. Is, is, is this all being done to maybe destroy the Federal Reserve note? You know, I've, I've heard it said that uh, somebody once told me I don't want to live in a world where gold is at 10,000 <laughs> uh, because think of where other assets would be. Uh, it wouldn't bother me at all. It, it would just be a reset that should have happened a long time ago uh, with the stock market being uh, up 500 uh, percent since it bottomed out in March of 2009. Uh, so when and and this isn't just the United States, uh, although the U.S. is the poster boy of overpriced assets right now and bubbles. Uh, so, yeah, again, I believe that once we get firmly past that nineteen hundred dollar level, it's a psychological level at this point. It's all psychology. All trading is uh, even though the trading floors are very quiet as far as human beings are concerned, especially since covid. Uh, it's all run by computers nowadays, but there's still psychology behind it. And once we get past that $1,900 level, there's really nothing stopping it from reaching greater levels. Um, what will that do to other asset classes? Uh, well, gold being more attractive is not a terrible thing. Uh, we, we've had gold as a real form of currency before. Why can't we have it again? Why does the dollar have to be uh, the world's main form of currency. Why does everything have to be pegged to the dollar? Why can't it be pegged to the gold? We had that up until 1971. Why can't we have it again? I would love to turn back the clock, at least as far as that's concerned. What effect would it have on the IMF, the biz, the EU, the ECB, the Fed, if we decided to go back to some type of gold standard. I mean, is there enough gold to do this? Some people say we have enough. Some people say we don't have enough. Others say it doesn't matter how much gold it is. It depends on the value of the gold. What happens to the central bank system if we go back to sound money? Yeah, well, the central bank, first of all, the people would take the power back, uh, which is the idea. They say if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And uh, hold it if you got it. And, you know, I, I believe that firmly. That doesn't mean you can't trade gold through stocks, which is what I help people to do. But um, yeah, would would the IMF love that? No. Would the Fed love that? No. Would the career politicians in Congress love that? No. Of course not. Uh, the powers that be don't want hard assets to have real enduring value, but they do. They always have. Uh, so the gold window is going to open again. It was closed back in 1971. Uh, but it will open again. And the silver window as well, as we talked about. You want to check that ratio and reallocate appropriately. Uh, so, no, the globalists, the elitists, uh, the deep state, they don't necessarily want people to recognize the populace to recognize the value of gold. And, it, you know, they've won that battle for many, many years. If you walk into a Wells Fargo, Bank of America or whatever and uh, they'll recommend a, uh, a fund manager, an investment manager for you. And they're never going to recommend gold or silver uh, or any commodities, really. They're going to recommend that you buy stocks. Uh, they're going to recommend maybe 60-40 uh, allocation, 60% stock indexes, index funds, that kind of thing, or mutual funds they're probably trying to sell you. And then 40% government bonds, which is a terrible way to go. Uh, the Fed funds rate will be between zero and 0.25 percent through 2022 at least that's according to the latest dot plot uh coming from the fomc so why would you go uh, 60 40 that's crazy why do that to yourself 
why not get some hard assets that's not just making a statement against the elitists, but also as self-protection against the deteriorating dollar, or against the deteriorating bond yields, and a stock market that uh, could crash if, well, but again, I'm not against going into the stock market in a select way, but stock indexes that are supremely overvalued, uh, we've got an economy in shambles, a second and third wave coming, and a, a wonderful rebound already priced in. Uh, so why not own those hard assets and protect yourself? And if you want to make a statement as well with that, that's fine too. So do you think gold, I mean, if if we do go back to sound money or when we go back to sound money, will it destroy the, the central bank establishment? Will they be able to operate in this new system? I think they'll have to adapt. I don't think it'll completely destroy it. No, uh, I think it'll be different. Um, I think they're cowards, and so they'll they'll be a lagging uh, indicator as always. Um, they'll go with the flow. Uh, we've seen uh, Powell buckle under pressure from Trump. Uh, you know, if that's all it takes, then they'll they'll kowtow to whatever the main trend is. And if it's towards if the tidal wave. It is is a flood into gold, into precious metals, which I see happening. Again, you got you got the uh, the hedge funds and the globalists just waiting to get in. Uh, I, I don't see how they wouldn't follow just to just to save their hides. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think it'll destroy them. I think it'll be a very different Fed and they'll find some other way to try to try to mess it up, try to screw it up. Um, so it, it's up to the people to uh, really have hard, enduring assets in their portfolio because there are things that the government can take away digitally and there are things that the government not, cannot so easily take away, uh, such as firearms, such as uh, your skills, if you know how to be self-sufficient and self-sustaining with farming and that sort of thing. Uh, and your hard assets. Uh, you got to find a safe place for them, uh, not some place that's easy to find, easy to locate. You don't have to go around telling everybody that you have it. I know we like to brag about it. I know we're proud of it, but uh, <laughs> you, you got to look out. It, I hate to say it's every man and every woman for himself now, but uh, when when the times get tough, that's just how it is. So uh, since Trump came into office, he got rid of the TPP. Uh, last year, he was at the UN and he said the globalist days, they're over. And now through the pandemic, he defunded the WHO. Other countries with NATO, he's saying, listen, if you don't pay up, we're not paying as much anymore. Everyone has to pay the same into NATO. Then he was talking about the World Trade Organization. And to me, all these organizations, these were all set up by the globalist system. Is he like dismantling the globalist system one by one. Yeah, I'm I'm sure he would love to take them on. I don't know if he's going to dismantle them necessarily. Um, right now, actually, as we're recording this, the House is going to vote today on a rule that's uh, designed to prevent a vote in July as to whether to withdraw from the WTR, the World Trade Organization. Um, and President Trump's tariffs on more than $350 billion worth of Chinese goods, they're claiming in the House uh, that uh, Trump's tariffs are supposedly violating inter international trade rules. I, I don't see how that's necessarily true. Um, I, Donald Trump, he would certainly love to dismantle the WTO. I don't necessarily think it's going to happen. I think there's enough resistance that it won't happen, at least during this term. Uh, if and when he gets a second term, and, and I'm calling that right now, not that it's it takes much courage to call that. It's it's pretty evident. But um, during a second term, things could change. If there is a change in Congress, then we can revisit this topic. Absolutely. Um, it's been called damaging. Uh, the uh, WTO chief called uh, Trump's criticism of the WTO damaging. Um, but again, he has a vested interest in it. Uh, the globalists, the elitist powers do have an interest in it. Trump has uh, been on a mission, on a quest to take down the deep state. He's, he's said so. This is part of it. It's going to take a while. It's not going to happen soon. Uh, I wouldn't mind if he took, if he took on the powers that be, that's fine. Uh, we just have to be patient with it. That's all. Now with the economy, let's just circle back to the economy for a sec. 
Trump and, and individuals in his administration are saying that, OK, this quarter, the economy is going to be coming back online. It's not going to be that great. The next quarter, it's going to improve. And then next year in 2021, it's going to be incredible. And he's talking about how everything is going to change. Uh, do you see that happening? Do you see the economy improving over time? Yeah, no, I, I improving over time no it, it's gone it's gotten too far ahead of itself we got to get past the waves of covid we got to get the economy back on track before we can even start thinking about a recovery and that's a secular phenomenon meaning a, a secular bull market a long term uh, it will not happen anytime this year probably or next year either um, there's been too much systemic damage we've got uh, the markets right now being held up by five stocks, Fang, <laughs> Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. Uh, those five companies account for 22 percent of the gains in the stock market right now. It's complete insanity. Uh, and meanwhile, you've got over 50 percent of S&P 500 companies are still at a loss for the year so far. So, no, uh, the economy will not get any better anytime soon. Uh, so I'm expecting, yes, more sell off, a second wave of sell off, uh, an L shaped or just <laughs> plunging economy. And I know it's lagging, but yes, the stock market will reflect uh, a lagging economy sooner or later. And when it does, you want to be allocated properly. No, I'm not optimistic. Um, I, I'm not counting on it. I, I'm counting on and and if Biden, heaven help us all, if he gets elected, what's going to happen then? Uh, then it's going to be even worse. Uh, that that's just going to destroy the economy. He's going to bring higher taxes. He said so already. Uh, and now the elitist powers they actually want higher taxes. They would love that. They would love to kill off the middle class. Uh, 50% taxes on the uh, ultra wealthy, it wouldn't kill them. It would kill you. It would kill me. It would kill all of us, just not the 1%. Uh, so <laughs> you got, you got to be prepared for that. Uh, we do have a report on what's going to happen with that. Uh, portfoliowealthglobal.com forward slash VP. That's for vice president VP. Uh, you got to get ready. There is a slight possibility. Uh, Sleepy Joe <laughs> will get in the White House. What's that going to bring and how bad will it be? It'll be bad. Trust me on that one. So you don't even think with uh, having a national emergency, the Defense Production Act, I mean, he's brought manufacturing of ventilators back to the U.S., manufacturing of masks back to the U.S. With Operation Warp Speed, he's bringing pharmaceutical manufacturing back to the U.S. Uh, the USMCA comes online and he's talking about, uh, he already signed an executive order for deregulation. He's talking about tax cuts. You don't think this is going to stimulate the economy in a completely different way than we've never seen before? And and that's why we we want, we, we would rather have him than uh, Joe Biden in, in the White House because at least he's doing something about it or trying to. He's facing resistance every step of the way. Uh, you know, he does not control all of Congress. He, he cannot just pass whatever he wants to pass. Yes, there are executive orders and national emergencies, but you could only pull that, you can only push that button so many times. Um, no, I, I, I don't think he can do this unilaterally. He's got to have the support Oh, he has the support of the American people, but he doesn't have the support of a number of career politicians, unfortunately. So there's resistance every step of the way. Um, at every Yes, there was even resistance to the reopening of the economy. There was resistance to uh, getting testing out there, testing kits out there, pushing for a vaccine. Uh, trying to get uh, firms that are, you know, Gilead and Moderna, uh, Inovio, uh, biofarms that are trying to make a difference, trying to get fast tracked, but they're not getting fast tracked. They're getting slow track, uh, <laughs> slow tracked uh, by people who don't want this to happen. Uh, there are Democrats in Congress who want America to be American citizens, I should say, to be dependent on them for the foreseeable pu foreseeable future. Uh, for them, the answer every single time is to print more money. Just print it because what do they care? It's not their money. <laughs> They'll just print it up. Uh, you know, they're Santa Claus, free everything for everybody. 
uh, you know, the what is it, the the Green New Deal or whatever. I, have you seen the price tag on this? Uh, so, no, I, I don't think Trump can do everything by himself. He needs support. Uh, he needs our our support, your support. Sure. But he also needs a government that will work with him. Uh, but again, that's why people put him in office to, uh, you know, try to drain the swamp and get people in there who are actually going to fight for America and who who actually are patriots. Do you think it's um, the, the elite, the deep state? Do you think it's their mission to keep the economy closed while he's trying to open it? Yeah, I mean, that that's the fundamental. Uh, yeah, that, that that's pretty much it. That's a pretty good summary of it. Uh, they would love to keep the economy closed, keep people, keep people dependent on uh, the deep state, on the shadow government that controls things because they can only control a desperate populace. They cannot control uh, self-aware people. It's harder to control people who are who have arms uh, and know how to use them, people who know how to farm people who are self-sustaining, people who know how to live off the grid if needed, uh, people who have hard assets, and so they're not dependent on uh, easily manipulated fiat currencies. Uh, so yeah, th that is the fight. That's one of the main reasons that, uh, that, that America elected Trump into office, uh, because he says what's on his, on his mind. Uh, you know, there's transparency there, and there's no political correctness there which I think is a good thing. Uh, I think was this was needed for a long time and because he's going to take on those powers uh, and he's not shy about it and he's, n he's not controllable. Uh, before, uh, the, the Fed, it, it was like the uh, cart pulling the, the donkey. You know, <laughs> the, the Fed controlled the presidency before. Now the presidency can be in control, can say, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is how it's going to be. I'm not going to kowtow to the special interests, the moneyed interests. Uh, and, you know, if if Biden gets back into office, <laughs> all hell is going to break loose. Uh, so, you know, we really need to get out there. I'm not going to tell people what how to vote, but we really need to think uh, really we need to think as patriots and not in the short term.